All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. I want to give y'all a brief update on the Somebody's texting me already. I want to give everybody a brief update on the eyeball situation because quite a few people in the comment section have been asking lately. I go in for another uh, in-depth check of it on November 1st. So in just a few days, under a week from recording this right now, hopefully I get a good report on it. Um, I don't know. Vision has been slowly returning. Um, it's still very blurry in this eye because the first uh, procedure they did to it made it about twice as nearsighted as the other one is. So that means I only see clearly out of this eye with these glasses. This side, it's like I don't have glasses on at all. It's so blurry. The gas bubble that has been in it has went down considerably. It's down about here, but it's like a bubble in a level. It it moves around and maintains position every, every time I move my head. And being that that is finally down out of my field of vision, that has corrected things or improved things quite a bit. I really feel that if I had an updated glasses prescription that matched both eyes now, for the most part, I would be unencumbered, probably 90 plus percent back to where I was before this all started. But we have to get the all clear report from the doctor first that they are satisfied that this eye has finally stopped changing enough that we can get an updated prescription. So. I have a few concerns as well. Um, my vision is affected uh, negatively, especially in low light conditions. Um, that could take anywhere up to two years to go away, or it might stay. Everybody's different. We'll have to see what they say at the next check. But I think I found a way to replicate to a, a rather you know, high degree of accuracy what it looks like to have a gas bubble inside of your eye after a retina procedure. So this is 50% of my field of vision. Now granted, when you mix that with the other 50% eye that has focus, you get a combination of a little bit of focus, but mostly the skewed vision still. And to pull it off, I'm just going to refract the light through this little jar right in front of the camera lens. So let's take it for a test drive. All right, this is the most accurate gas bubble distortion simulation that I can manage with the camera. As you can see, we've got a little bit of periphery vision up top because it start, it, they fill it about 80%, but it distorts everything down low to the point. And forget about looking at light, um, you pretty much lose everything. So yeah, we're standing in front of the H, but how do you focus on anything? It's like, where were those cracks in the grill i don't even remember um the workbench try to grab any one of those tools because the positions of them change it's funhouse mirror distortion depth perception is non-existent all right so there's the there's the window here's the toolbox i need i need a pair of players out of that drawer um which ones where are they uh try to grab at them distance is completely off it's almost impossible see everything gets skewed and this is actually a pretty accurate representation of what it looked like when the gas bubble was at uh, 80 percent that's everything i saw out of my right eye over two months it slowly goes down so you slowly start getting a view over the top uh, but right now it rolls around so pretend everything here is is blurry you still can't see anything that would just be a red blob the gas bubble's down to probably about this level right here. And it it's like a bubble in a level, okay? It, it flops around. But the trouble is, every time I go to look down, it rolls up in front of my field of vision. And then I put my head up, it gets back down further out of the way. So still, you can't really look down and do much because that darn thing rolls around every time you move your head. So that is what I've been dealing with for almost the last two months. And that's why... I still can't do anything for shop work because I, I can't see. And for the longest time, I couldn't be around a lathe or a milling machine or a drill because I didn't know how far away from things I was. So it was a safety concern for sure. Uh, it would still be difficult to read um, measurements, micrometers, gauges, things of the like. But uh, a lot of people have asked what caused this. Uh, was it from eye trauma? Was it from wearing contacts? Was it um, long story short, uh, no, wearing contacts, no, because that's on the front of the eye. The retina is deep inside the eye on the back wall. And it comes from being profoundly nearsighted. I have been my whole life. I've had to wear glasses since I was about eight years old. And as you age, 
your eyeball starts to change shape when you're really nearsighted. It goes from a uh, round to more of an elongated, almost egg shape. But the trouble is the retina inside does not keep pace with the changing shape of the eye. And then it starts to get pulled and then it can start to detach. And they said that starts happening typically when you're in your forties. Bing, right on the dot. Uh, they first told me that I had thin retinas back in, I think it was 2015 when I hired on with BNSF Railway, and that was the first really in-depth eye exam that I had as part of that hiring process where they fully dilated your eyes, looked inside of it, gave them a scan, and they told me back then I could very well expect to have issues like this coming up, and sure enough, they, they had the forecast right, almost right on the dots. So um, there is a lattice that's forming in the left retina right now. And it's it means that it's pulling apart and it's like a lattice work on the bottom of a house deck or what have you. It's perforating a little bit. So after they get this right side eye fixed as far as they can go, they want to go in and do the same uh, open up and suck the fluid out laser vitrectomy on the left eye as they did here, kind of as a preemptive strike because it's gonna happen in this one too eventually. So y'all are up, up to speed. I am so ready though to get back to somewhat normal life. Um, I haven't ran outside or exercised for almost two months. I haven't lifted for almost two months. Um, I've been getting out of shape. I've been gaining weight. I've, I'm really ready just to be able to start doing anything again. So I'm, I'm really hoping for a good report on November 1st. And I thank everyone for the well wishes and the thoughts and the prayers and everything. All the kind words that I've read in the comment section. I appreciate it, everyone. And I thank you all for your ongoing patience with this. I would love to be back on the Farm All H as soon as I can get a glasses prescription that matches both eyes. I think we can start doing minor things like wiring, probably do a carb rebuild, um, generator, starter, things like that, even if they still don't clear me for welding and grinding. But you all are up to speed. Thank you again, everyone. Somebody's still texting me. Hope to see you all back again.